Hello people, it's Jonathan again, aka the PC Genie. Today we're going to be talking about a subject which somewhat commonly comes up when talking about fighting, and that is something they call dual wielding. Obviously, in those sorts of instances you talk about in regards to games and movies, they're usually talking about some person who's got two of the same kind of weapon, like in this case, the most common one, two swords. Now indeed, I mean it's certainly a very legitimate way that someone could fight because of course you've got two angles you can take at once you can have for example one sword defending one sword attacking and swap between them and do all sorts of things like that but for a majority of the time especially when talking historically usually actually you'd have two different weapons used when doing any kind of dual wielding for example rather than having two swords you might have for example perhaps a sword and an axe or something. We've got two different length weapons, weapons that can do for different things, like an axe can hook, you know, on the limbs, on a weapon, places like that. It can hit around places like shields. It's a different kind of reach. The sword, of course, is better at a longer range. An axe is more of a closer range, depending on weapon length and whatnot. Or, of course, something else, like for example, a common one scene, especially when talking about weapons like the rapier, is sword and dagger. So then of course you can have one weapon parrying, one weapon attacking, and again you've got an extreme difference, like I mentioned earlier with the sword and the axe, you've got an extreme difference where you've got a very long weapon and a very short weapon, so you can be effective at both distances, and of course use one to do one thing and one to do the other thing, both at once. Another one is, of course, although people might not necessarily think of them as weapons, would be sword and shield. Because although you might think that a shield isn't really a weapon, actually, with something like a buckler especially, you've got things like you can use the boss to hit someone in the face, you could use the edge of the weapon, and of course you can also use it simultaneously with your weapon as sort of a cover, so you can go like that keep your weapon hand covered, attack, and of course go around the sides and do things like that. Plus, of course, I mean this would have started out as basically being used like a weapon, be covering, attacking, so you've got an offense and defense, except something like a sword is of course more offensive, and something like a shield being more defensive, but both can attack and defend whenever you need to, really. So of course you've got various styles that evolve around swords, shields, bucklers and that sort of thing. But as well, you even see some more sort of possibly might think more unusual combinations. One which of course people might think is a bit more bizarre. I mean you guys have probably heard of the phrase cloak and dagger to mean being more sort of discreet and nefarious, but actually it's a genuine weapon style. And there are even manuscripts describing things like using a sword and using something like a cloak to help cover the hand, of course, and as a defence, but also to do things like wrap around. If you have ever seen things like gladiator fighting, it's a bit like when you use the net, so you can use it to sort of cover yourself and defend, and perhaps to do a few feints and pretend to attack the opponent. But you can also just wrap it around their face and stab them, or something like that. So you've got various things you can do when you've got a proper weapon, like a sword, and even when you pick up a secondary weapon as basic as some spare coat you've got. And then you've already got something that helps you a lot in a fight. So then you can free up your weapon hand to do all kinds of things. So yeah, basically that's, that's basically what I was just going to say. That uh, you've got various different weapon combinations. And instances where you would use two different weapons. But bearing in mind, most of the time in history, and in various manuscripts and things like that, you'd normally see different weapon combinations like sword and buckler, sword and dagger, dagger and cloak, all of those kinds of things rather than two of two axes or two daggers or two swords. Because what's the point? If you've already got something that does the purpose of something like a sword, why have another one? You know, go through all the trouble of getting that when you could use something that's different and going to help you in different ways like a dagger or something. So, tell me what I think. I mean, there are plenty of weapon combinations there are. 
I'd love to hear from you guys some of the things you can get. Because I've heard of things as bizarre as late night, you know, or, or re really early morning people doing illegal dueling and using things like a rapier or a broadsword or something like that, and a lantern. There are even things like manuscripts and treatises describing how you fight, not just, of course, with the obvious weapon, but how to use the non-obvious weapon as a weapon in and of itself. So, uh, again, tell me what sort of combinations you can think of. I mean, even if you're talking about things like sword and a pistol or other projectile weapon, tell me what sort of weapons you can think of that might be an interesting combination. Cheers, guys.